All right, well, I paid up for that one. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George. I'm in Dawson Springs, Kentucky now. I am at the Cotton's auction, and I saw some things in their preview online that looked pretty good and like things that I can use. So I am going to bid at this auction. And apparently I'm not the only one because Nana here has brought an entire horse trailer that she apparently intends to fill. So I hope she's here to buy furniture because I want the little stuff. Well, there's some other people here to preview too. And one question people ask is, why preview when you can just see it all online these days? Well, my friend Mark Cotton, who runs this auction, he puts everything up on auction zip and he usually gets most of the pictures up in time. But there is still a good reason to preview and that is that you can't tell from a picture what the condition of things are, and a lot of these auctions, especially smaller country auctions, are buyer beware. You are expected to come preview and to know what you're buying before you bid on it. And if you bid on it and it turns out it's broken or a piece of junk, or the price was per item instead of for the entire lot, you're out of luck. You bid on it, it's yours. So that's why we come and preview, and we're going to do that right now. So there's some pretty cool toys here. I'm going to have to look at some prices really fast. This Ertl livestock van has all of its horns and everything. It's not in perfect shape, but it's not broken, and it's pretty good. So I'll take a look at that. Some of these are played with a little harder than others. Condition makes a big difference on toys. So I'm going to be selective, but there are a few good ones here. This is what the Cotton's auction looked like around 1950 when it was the Dodge dealer in town. Dawson Springs used to have Dodge, Chevy, and Ford dealers. You can see the old company truck out front there. That's pretty cool. And there's my bidder number. Once you register at an auction, they usually keep you on file with that bidder number. And here's something I want to bid on. It's missing its stacks, but it's still a pretty cool piece, and they actually sell for a lot more than I thought. I like this truck too, but I think it's missing its front grille. Here's something neat. It's a fan that you would put in a car to defrost your window and to give you some air back in the days before cars were made with defrosters and air conditioning and all that good stuff. They're pretty valuable now. This is a pretty good miner's lamp. These sell for about 50 or 75 a piece. I do sometimes steal in old ammunition boxes too, but these aren't super old. These look like 1970s and 80s and that's not really old enough to get me too excited for much money. Hmm, a Yankee sled in Kentucky. I wonder how they're going to feel about that. And then this gal from the 1930s or 40s playing the piano has a lovely orange gown and roses to match. Now, I'm not interested in the firearms, although they are legal to sell under state law as long as you do the right background checks and everyone's registered, but I do like these stag-handled knives. These are things I do deal in, so I'm going to see how they do. Knives go pretty high at auction here, though. We're in the part of the country where a lot of guys make their own, and I'm sure that's what the case is with these. The sheaths are nice. They're commercially made. Here's a bunch of the reproduction glass rolling pins from the 80s, but you can still use them to hold marbles and things. An old Sunoco tin, that'll sell for something. And then I love the fire nozzle. That is something I'd really like to have to take to a show. I've done well with those in the past. Then we have a bunch of newer carnival glass. By newer, I mean 1960s, 70s. A little Fenton shoe. 
And then a nice Fenton hobnail cranberry pitcher. I just sold two of these in Florida, so I could definitely use another one in stock. And we'll have to try to look it over to make sure all those hobs are good. I can do it visually, but the best thing is to run the palm of your hand over it so you can really feel any little chips. And this is a really neat 20th century water cooler with the big old carboy on top that has the embossing. I wish it had its spigot, but this is a really cool piece, and if it doesn't go too high, I'd be interested in it, but it probably will. This is a popular thing at this auction. Kryptonic skateboards made in California since 1965. I'm not sure about that brand. It looks like an older one, but, you know, they may be doing those again. I'll have to look into that. Here's an old Griswold. Looks like one of the aluminum cast. And let's see what we've got here. This looks like a pellet gun. Magline. Old litho of George Washington. Some of those are pretty valuable. I undersold one recently at one of my estate sales. Yeah, it went to a friend of mine, so I'm glad she did well on it. Let's see what number's on this ball jar. No number at all. Okay. I know people look for number 13. Neat loaf pan here with the blue and the flowers on it. This is Fire King, a pattern you don't see so often. I don't think that had a special lid. You could put a regular clear lid on it, I think. This is wattware, but it's got the uh, crazing in it pretty bad. Old barrel pitcher and a pink depression glass pitcher. Those are nice, but not something that we don't see a lot of. The old Union Depot in Kansas City, it was popular when Anchor Hawking came out with the Royal Ruby to make its souvenir glasses out of it. So Kansas City had their centennial in 1950. They had Anchor Hawking make a whole set. I think there's eight in this series of various old buildings in KC. Got the celluloid dresser set. This is fairly contemporary. Look at the way it's polished on the bottom. So that tells us it's not 1930s Czechoslovakian, which is what we were hoping, but that's all right. And this is Victorian milk glass with enameling that's fairly worn, but it is glass rather than porcelain. A little bit of modern tone. We've got this 70s flower power pitcher next to a Fenton custard glass face. I'll be looking at that for sure. Got two Aladdin milk glass lamps here. One of them has painting on it that someone may have done after the fact, and the other one is just original the way it is. <laughs> now the Aladdin here, we've got the Aladdin knob, and nice and the thing is it says Aladdin on the chimney, so that's original and that's nice. Because a lot of utility oil lamp chimneys, like these ones on the clear glass ones behind, ended up on Aladdin lamps because the chimneys got broken. And those are surprisingly valuable. The one with the milk glass on the right, they sell for over $100. Aladdin lamps are very popular. And I don't want to get in the way of other people who are previewing. We've got a nice moon and star set. Let's check the lids, make sure they're perfect. Nothing wrong with that one. That one looks fine. That looks good. And, yep. They're all pretty good. One little, very minor rough spot there. I don't think that really matters to anybody, though. Okay, we've got a Marksman repeater here. Huntington Beach, California. Marksman is going to be another pellet gun. This one made in USA, but it's very lightweight. That's a daisy. That one's a pistol. And then this little one is to look like a lady's derringer by Colt, but it's got John Wayne on it, and that's just sort of a commemorative piece. I don't even know if that one fires. There's some nice pattern glass lamps here. If you like Victorian glass, these are some pretty interesting patterns, at least this one here. It's more unusual. We usually see things 
like these plain ones behind it. And so this is something different. Little bit of carnival glass, nothing real exciting. Cute little corn teapot here. That's Shawnee corn. And it's in pretty good shape. The little bowl here has one very small nick on the front, but that does matter to people, unfortunately. Some little metal tops. There's a Fenton bowl. I'm going to look at this because even though it's not my style, it is Fenton, but it's milk glass made to look like custard, so it's not custard glass. Shirley Temple Creamer, I just got one of those. These are interesting to me. This one is Handlin from St. Louis, and this one is from the city of St. Louis for the sewer division. It looks like it wasn't used. That's probably a good thing. There's another Ruby Moon and Stars, the big banana boat there. And then we have some 70s and slightly prior Gone with the Wind lamps. They're called that because of the movie. They obviously did not have electrified lamps in the time of Terra, so it's a bit of a misnomer. This is an old treadle sewing machine base that's for the new Royal. And it's been turned into a table, as you can see. The Duke clock. This looks like a German wall clock from the 30s. But it's actually made in Boulogne-sur-Mer, France, as a copy of the German styles of the time. Souvenir spoons. I don't see anything silver there. I don't think they'd leave it out if it was. Several BB rifles. These are all in better shape than the ones I've got, so depending on the prices, I might be interested. It's nice when they're really clean, like this one here, but this one also has a plastic stock, as does that one, and people prefer the wood stock, so this one's the older one of the group, the daisy at the bottom there. Kiss Psycho Circus. Psycho Circus represents the principles of the universal balance, the ultimate harmony of the cosmos. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work, but sure. When were these out? I know these were a thing at one time. It was back when you had to call to join the Collector's Club, but they do have the www.com, so this is probably going to be something from the 90s. McFarland did a lot of these that involve musical groups. And some of them are collectible now, but they sure made a ton. Old water pistol, a couple of decent little cap guns. I like this old metal one the best. This one is a W, and then there's an S on the other side. 1930s toy gun with the star. This one looks 50s with the bulldog. 50s or 60s. It's got a little police shield on there and it says bulldog up on the barrel. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Piece of Sooner glass there. These blue spatter crocs are nice. They're Roseville, but it's not Roseville like most people think of. It's RRP Company, which is Robinson Ram's Bottom Pottery. They were actually based in Roseville, Ohio. Roseville Pottery, strangely enough, was not made in Roseville, Ohio. And they are collectible, but those are not particularly old. Some of this wattware looks like it may have some age. There is a hairline crack. Again, this is why you preview. You need to see what you're getting before you bid. The smaller bowls look like they're in reasonable shape. Sooner Glass Swan. This Jack in the Pulpit Cranberry Vase, I believe, is 
Hmm, it has a mark I cannot quite read unless that's dirt. Yeah, this is very lightweight. This is going to be a small American house or offshore production. This, on the other hand, is Fenton, and it's got the hand-painted, and I think I'm reading that as Larson. Fenton tiered cake plate. This bowl is Fenton. These plates are Fenton. Bunch of character figures here. Sewn and applied quilt. Got an old milk can, kind of typical stuff we see in these parts. Let's see if we can determine who made the violin. It's got no label, it's lightweight. Condition is fine, it's not cracked at the neck, it appears. Missing a string. Looks like it's in good overall condition. Probably a student model, that's usually what we see. Old Coca-Cola bottle radio, I like those. I'm gonna take that out and see what kind of shape it's in. And we have a Goodyear tire ashtray. So there's some stuff here I like and we'll definitely bid on. Okay, well this has never been out of its original wrap, so it should work. Oh yes, and the old pencil box with the compass in it and a tank candy container. Those are both gonna to date to around 1950. So people are doing their thing. They are doing their inspection. It's a pretty good crowd, so hopefully I'll get some stuff. I was hoping the nice sunny warm weather and Easter weekend would keep the crowds down, but this is the only thing happening in town, so there you go. Funny thing is I see some people I recognize like the guy in the hat behind the video machine from the Benton auction. So this is definitely drawing a crowd tonight. We'll see how prices go. This may be more a pricing education than a buying okay, opportunity, but we'll find out. And... Remember to help our premium about something. Uh, one car, two hands. Uh, Remember to help our premium about something. They're doing a bunch of coins and stuff as well, and even though I collect them, they were pretty ordinary to me, so I'm not really a bidder here. Anyway, it's got $200 on it. Look at the $210. $200 on it. Where are you? That's $4,000. You can go $210 on it. Anybody go $205? Anybody go $205? Last call. Sold $200, number four. So he had a phone bed on that one, and that one went for the phoned in price. It looks like a. Yeah, it looks like it's standing up. It is it's definitely standing up. So I'll be bidding on this. Who can you turn it on for? It. How about 10? Somebody throw me on 10. Let's see. I got 10. Anybody on 12? You know, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. Anybody on 28 on that? Looks like I'm going to get it for so, $26. $26, $293, $293. And they That's bring it over to you, which is pretty nice. So here's my Fenton pitcher for $26. I just sold the same one for $65. Here's a big ceiling medallion. Look right in I got $5. Look at how much you can buy. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $
All right, well, I paid up for that one. It's taking all of them, and boy, they went for $32 each. What sells them for what price at an auction can have a lot to do with where you are. $34, you can just about pick those up new at the gun shop. Coins, ammo, you have a lot of preppers here, so you're going to sell that kind of stuff pretty readily, and sometimes for more than you would get anywhere else. Well, the gun had 300 reserve in it, and it did not hit the reserve, so it went to the back and will be given back to the consigner or held for another auction if they decide to let it go for less. Well, that just got out of my realm. I know that custard is popular, but that's going to have to go for 60 bucks to make anybody any money, and that was just too much in my opinion. Okay, these are a bunch of ornamental weapons. They're all ornamental. It'll be interesting to see what they go for, because this is just something to hang on people's walls. Mark does a pretty good job of keeping so, straight who his bidders are. He wants the white. Yeah, he took the best the one for 26. It's probably worth double that. Then he'll go to the back of the room and see if they're willing to pay 26 and they usually are. So then they start over. So that's how much the next one's worth. Okay, they're going to put the Gone with the Wind lamps out here. While the auctioneer takes a break here, we'll talk a little bit about some things. You notice nobody bids on his first offer. I learned the hard way. I embarrassed myself. The first auction I went to, I saw something. I thought the price was fair. I bid right away, and everybody backed right off. So I did end up with it, but it turned out I could have had it for half. You always let the first bid pass, and then you start bidding at an auction like this. The other thing is that uh, you will notice that different people have different styles. I usually raise my bidder card. Some people just nod. Some people just raise their hand. It's just making sure that the auctioneer has, that you have the auctioneer's attention so that they know that you're bidding. So the auctioneer was finding out that they had a $110 phone bid before they got started. I don't think anyone's going to take it for 115 that's my guess, but we'll see. Well, all I managed to do was drive up the price that guy had to pay by $2, so that's the way it goes. These Fenton plates I find hard to sell, but we'll see what the people say. They are carnival from the early 70s. I got five there, anybody go six? That's cheap. Five call. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is one that I like here. Yep. 
20, 22, 24, 26. We may go 26, 26, 28. You may go 28. So 26 dollars, number. 239, 239. He liked it just $2 more than I did. Okay, this next one is good, and I'm going to try to see what I can do about this one. Because I like this. Well, we're going to see him roll. Who did he 20 for it? Same roll is going to be it. Who did he 20? How about 10? How about 10? Anybody want 12? 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. So, $26. Keep it in your number. Okay. $293. Okay, I got it. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. This one actually sells one. for good money. Well, you don't really think this is all I bought, do you? Join me in my next video. We will have a Disney collection and more auction highlights. And I'll show you a list of everything I bought and the haul and what I paid for it. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Thanks for joining me for this and see me on the social media listed below. We'll see you all very soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.